Chapter 13, Persuasion. In this chapter, we're going to look at persuasive speaking and talk a little bit about persuasion. Some objective is define persuasion, define ethos, logos, and pathos, explain the barriers to persuading an audience, construct a clear and reasonable proposition for a short classroom speech, compose an outline for a well-supported persuasive speech, analyze the audience to determine appropriate emotional and personal appeals. So to begin, why persuasion? Why persuade? <coughs> Excuse me. Many people are not comfortable with the prospect of persuasion because it's seen as manipulative or power-driven. In fact, it is a part of our everyday life. So inform information plus change equals persuasion. So when you're giving a persuasive speech, you're providing information to your audience and the goal of providing that information is to lead them to some sort of change, which is persuading them in some way. A simple definition is the process of creating, reinforcing, or changing people's beliefs or actions. So persuasion is best understood on a continuum. Anytime we are persuading an audience, we're speaking to an audience and our goal is to to persuade them on an issue, we're looking at a couple of different things. We're looking at this continuum of persuasion. Sometimes when we go into our, our situation, our speaking situation, we'll find people that already agree with us. So those people may be on the plus one or plus two of the continuum. So of course, what's your goal is to move them up to the per plus three or beyond. Sometimes we have people that adamantly disagree with us. So they may be in the negative side of the continuum. So by the end of your presentation, you may not completely persuade them, but your goal is that you get them moving in the right end of the continuum. So maybe they were a negative three and you've gotten them to a negative one or a zero, or even better on the strongly agree positive end. Sometimes we have people that just don't care about the topic we're talking about. They're neutral. They haven't really thought about it. They don't really care about it. They don't have an opinion one way or another. So your goal after providing their, that information to them is to get them in to care, um, to get them into the agree range, the positive end of the continuum. So thinking about the continuum, visualize and quantify where your audience stands on the topic. Except that at any movement towards the right, plus three is a win. So anytime you get someone to budge a little bit in their beliefs, that's considered to be a win. Remember, it's virtually impossible to change from one from a negative three to a plus three in one speech. So rarely is someone going to walk into a speaking engagement, be adamantly against what you're saying, and then turn around in five to 10 minutes and are adamantly for it. So, but if you can get them to consider your point of view, move a little bit toward the right of the continuum, that's success. So there's three possible goals. You can create support. So you can take anyone from a zero to the plus side. You can reinforce existing support. So it's someone that already agrees with you and you, you send them on further on the continuum or you can get someone to change their mind. They may be on the negative side and you get them to inch at least on a little bit to the right to the positive side. So target audience, identify the members of the audience the speaker most wants to persuade and who are likely to be receptive to the persuasive messages. That doesn't mean that you ignore the rest of your audience, but you consider who is the most persuadable. Understanding the persuasive uh, process. Attempt to get as much information as possible about your audience, their knowledge, and their attitudes. So it always helps to know where your audience is coming from. Know if your speech is a think or do speech. Are you convincing someone? Or are you motivating them to do something? Are you posing something that you get want them to consider? Are you wanting them to take action and do something by the end? Consider framing your argument as a position for something, not against. That makes it a lot easier. Phrase your prop proposition as clearly as possible. So a refined definition, persuasion is a symbolic process in which communicators try to convince other people to change their attitudes or behaviors regarding an issue through the transmission of a message in an atmosphere of free choice. The refined definition emphasizes audience choice. Ultimately, it's up to the audience as to whether or not they're going to accept the words that you present. Mental dialogue as an active component. I don't know about you, but I 
oftentimes mentally debate people when I'm listening to a speech. Sometimes it's, it's not said, but in my mind, I am refuting that information. I recently served in jury on a jury trial um, in the jury, and I throughout the process in my head, I found myself presenting opposing arguments um, in my mind. So a lot of times we have a mental dialogue that's an active component. So consider that when you're giving a speech, many of your audience members are kind of processing what you're saying, and they're raising questions in their mind about what you're talking about. Attempt as not always successful. So do know that every time we try to persuade someone, we're not going to be successful. It demands an ethical approach of speaker. Anytime you're presenting information to an audience of any kind, it's extremely important that the information that you're providing your audience is accurate, it's valid, it's reputable, because you want to make sure that you're an ethical presenter, that you can be trustworthy in all the words that you say. So in a persuasive speech, that's even more important because you're trying to change someone's mind. You're trying to get them to do something. You're trying to change an attitude, behavior, or belief. So it's even more important that in the process of doing that, you have ensured that all the information you're providing to your audience is the very best possible research that, that's out there. You have gotten the very best information. You haven't You've interpreted it perfectly. You haven't stretched the information. You haven't skewed data um, to say what you want to say. So it's very important. Your ethical responsibility of a, as a speaker is that your information is, is accurate, valid, and the, and the best information that you can possibly present. So why is persuasion hard? Change is stressful and unders, undesirable. We use selective exposure to protect our current thinking. Sometimes if we don't agree with something, we just shut down and we don't want to listen to it. The theory of cogniz cognitive dissonance, where people, we avoid conflicting information or viewpoints. Audience can help reservations or counter arguments when listening. I uh, can develop, I'm sorry. Like we were talking about a second ago, people have a mental dialogue. So when you're presenting information to an audience, they are, ha they are providing those counter arguments to what you're saying in their head. So you have to make sure that your speech is so thorough that you are aware of what they're probably thinking. You're aware of opposing viewpoints and you attack and address those opposing viewpoints in your speech for your audience members. So solutions to the difficulty of persuasion. Create a reasonable persuasive goal, a proposition that involves incremental movement. You're not going to completely change someone's attitude, belief, or behavior in one speech. Address reservations head on. I know that this is what other people say about this topic. This is why I, feel, I believe that is inaccurate, and this is why. Don't insult the audience. Don't demean anyone that has an opposing viewpoint, but rather support what you're saying with data. Provide evidence for your counter arguments. Stress the benefits and the rewards of the change that you are proposing. Traditional views of persuasion by Aristotle. Aristotle felt that in order to persuade someone, we had to accomplish three different things. We had to use three different proofs in order to persuade our audience. The first is logos or logical proof. So in our presentations, in our rhetorical arguments, we have to have logic, evidence, and we have to have it structured in a way that's sensible to your audience and they can easily follow our thought process. We also have to have ethos. Ethos, ethical proof, is the credibility of the speaker. This is seen as the perception the audience has about the speaker's trustworthiness and credentials. So are you qualified to speak on this topic? Is there something that relates you to this topic in some way? Um, if you're giving a speech on diabetes, it's important to tell us if you are diabetic, that gives ethical proof. If you're giving a speech on ADHD, it's important to tell us, I have ADHD, I have a child with ADHD. This gives you credible proof. It's important to tell us your life experience, your education experience, your career experience that leads you to be qualified to speak on this topic. And then there's emotions, pathos, eth uh, emotional appeal. This uses the emotions, uh, emotions or appeals of the, to persuade your audience. Um, so think about this. Sometimes we have audience members, we'll always have audience members that 
only that need logic. They need proof. They need hard facts and data. That's what's going to get them on your side. We need other people. We have other people in our audience that need emotional proof. They've got to make some sort of connection to your topic in order for them to care. So that emotional proof is important. So think about advertising and commercials. And I always use the example of the ASPCA commercials. So I think most of us would agree the main thing that they do in the ASPCA commercials is pathos. They have an emotional appeal to the audience. Okay, they, they show the, the animals that are in a terrible conditions. They appeal to our emotions. But then they also use logos. And they talk about how simply uh, just a dollar a day can impact the life of an animal. Only donating this small amount can provide a life-changing environment for dogs. So they use both sides of it. So in order to persuade an audience, we have to incorporate all of these things. We have to have facts and statistics and evidence. Our audience has to trust and believe us. And then we have to have an emotional appeal to show some how to, how to connect our audience to our topic. So a few notes about pathos. It uses Maslow's hierarchy of needs, especially the middle three, safety, love, belonging, self-esteem. So this is saying Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we've discussed this in other chapters, that we need to know where our audience is to know what their needs are. And so our need for safety, love and belonging, self-esteem, that's the middle three of Basil's hierarchy of needs and pathos appeals to that. Fear is a viable emotion to use under some circumstances. So sometimes our statistics, our data can invoke fear in our audience. Sometimes stories, um, examples can do that and that brings about pathos. Positive emotion is better to use. So usually if you can bring out some sort of positive to, uh, emotion in the audience, that work, that can work. Constructing a persuasive speech. Formulate a good proposition. Construct the speech around the type of proposition. And continue to build your evidence, build your speech with quality evidence. So four types of propositions. Facts. Attempt to establish the truth of a statement. Definition. Argues for a specific meaning of something. Value. One idea, policy or action is better, more than ethical than others. Policy, a should specific action to be taken or change to be made. So proposition of fact examples, converting solar energy can save homeowners money. Experiments using animals are essential to the development of life-saving, many life-saving medical procedures. Granting tuition tax credits to the parents of children who attend private schools will perpetuate educational inequity. Climate change has been caused by human activity. So these are examples of proposition of facts. Propositions of value examples, hybrid cars are the best form of automobile transportation available today. Homeschooling is more beneficial for children than traditional schooling. Mascots that involve Native American names, characters, and symbols are demeaning. A vegan diet is the healthiest one for adults. Proposition of policy, our state should require mandatory recertification of lawyers every 10 years. The federal government should act to ensure clean water standards for all citizen. citizens. Our state should require drivers over the age of 75 to take a vision test and present a certificate of good health from a doctor before renewing their licenses. And young people should monitor their blood pressure regularly to avoid problems later in life. So how to organize a persuasive speech. So propositions of facts, make it a topical organization with two to four discrete arguments. Put your strongest arguments last. That's going to be the most memorable. Propositions of value, define the value, support the value with two to four arguments and include refutation of opposing arguments. Proposition of policy, you can use the problem solution or problem cause solution organizational pattern. And consider, again, Monroe's Motivated Sequence. We discussed this with the Organizational Pattern chapter, but Monroe says you get the attention of the audience, you establish and remind them that they have a need or a problem, you satisfy that need or you solve that need, you have them visualize how great things will be once that's solved, and then you tell them how they can take action. So building with evidence. The audience must find you credible and they must find your evidence credible. 
the audience must perceive it as new. They haven't heard this information before or dealt with it. If you're trying to persuade your audience on something, the fact that you're using the most up-to-date information is crucial for your audience. It must be cited in context and up-to-date. If you're going to state facts to your audience and you're wanting to persuade them, you need to include your citation as you state the, the facts, the statistics, in order for them to know, okay, he's giving me some um, statistics. Where did that statistics come from and how recent were they gathered? That information is important to be cited as you give your speech. Visual aids may help some aspects of persuasion, like we discussed with the presentation aids chapter. I think especially when you're talking about presenting data, statistics, um, number, quantitative evidence to your audience. So remember, embrace persuasion as a part of life and relationships. Choose a topic you are committed to in life when you choose your persuasive topic. Phrase your proposition carefully and reasonably. Include ethos, logos, and pathos, all the available means of persuasion by Aristotle in your speech. Use new, cited, credible evidence. And so more to consider, go to YouTube and look up persuasive speeches by college students. There are a lot of options. Um, see if you find some good persuasive speeches. Um, what did the speaker do correctly? What do they need to work on? I look forward to hearing the topics that you guys are passionate about. I think the persuasive speech is one of the most interesting ones to hear because it gives me a lot more information on my students. So I look forward to, to hearing the ones that you present this semester.